back. So when we last left off, I was talking about all the mods that needed to be done to the redrive to get it to run a full oil bar setup. So I got the 4132 bin that's going to replace that uh, the brass tube that I had with the feed before because I wanted to, you know, do something that's uh, going to be a bit more reliable than the brass. So that one uh, was getting um, tapped on the end or getting threaded on the end of here. And then this is the, uh, the old aluminum plug there that goes in the top of the redrive. And I'm just drilling that out to a larger diameter so that tube will go through and have like a little bit of a clearance. I think I left about uh, 12 thousandths or something. So the tube sort of slides in there and a little bit of play in there, which is what I want. And ultimately you're gonna put a, a little recess in the top of this uh, nut and that'll allow us to put an O-ring around that 4130 tube and along with some uh, washers and a nut on there that'll uh, seal off the top of that so there you know, will be a nice uh, airtight seal and at the same time the o-ring will keep um, that whole tube sort of in the center of this nut um, but allow a little bit of flexibility so as we had before um, that oil collar can ride on that on the prop shaft with a little bit of movement so uh, drilled it out and now and Brit set up a larger uh, bit here and we're just doing the, the recess there uh, for the um, for the o-ring so this is what it looks like now um, the tube feeds in there obviously the tube's still on but you can see that and it's got a little bit of play in there which is what I want um, and then when you put the washers on there or one washer on there with the o-ring and you put a bit of pressure on there it doesn't jiggle around as much although it can still move so uh, here's the uh, the nut that's going to be welded on there and this was just a nut with a thread in it and we want to just have it slide over the tube so I'm just basically drilling the thread out of the inside of it there so it can slide over that uh, 4130 tube and then Brit's going to weld it up so here it is now the tube's been shortened the 4130 tube and Brit's just uh, tacking the, uh, the nut onto there um, and then obviously pulls it out uh, the drive doesn't need to weld it up while it's sitting in there but it, I wanted him to tack it on there while it was sitting there so we had it with the right uh, with the right length because it was threaded into the um, into the collar inside there so now he's using his cool little device that he has which uh, slowly rotates at whatever speed that he wants set and it's really handy for welding up anything that has a circular kind of weld on it so he's just uh, you know, in the little vice that he has on there, he's uh, you know set up that uh, little collar thing there with a the nut and welded it. So there you can see, there's the nut with the recess that was done, and that's the recess to pick up the um, the O-ring, and then ultimately you take that little fixture that Brit welded up there now and you see it's th I threaded it on the one end that was the what first thing I was doing in this video oh, and then I got the o-ring on there and a couple of washers and then the nut that Brit welded on and then another thread on the other end so it's screwing into the oil collar right now and uh, once that goes in you yeah, see it so you it's nice and snug and Brit's just using the he's talking about his credit wrench there and it is, in fact, a crescent wrench. <laughs> Not adjustable, a crescent wrench. I'm always a comedian. Yeah, so now you can see there, there's the, uh, the O-ring is squashed down a little bit. And it, it is, everything's tight, but there's enough little bit of play in there. So uh, it can move around if the uh, shaft happens to move at all because of the tapered roller bearings. So that's that little job done. And uh, here's the uh, oil pan there. Britt welded that uh, little weld bung on there. Got the fitting in there. And he also put a little weld through on the inside as well. So that one's all ready now. Just needs to be cleaned up and it can go back on the engine. And so we're now we're on to Friday morning and I'm back up at Britt's place for a couple more jobs that still needed to be done. So the first one is drilling this drain hole on the angle there in the side of that housing and I uh, ended up doing it at about the 54 degree mark up from the bottom there which means that there'll be about three quarters of an inch is the deepest um, level there in the center of that housing where the oil is going to remain um, 
and uh, you know that way it'll always have an oil bath on those uh, um, bearings and stuff when everything goes to start up. So drilling that one there with the 9 16th bit and uh, ultimately we ended up tapping it. And then this is the uh, the seal, the oil seal for the back cover of the redrive and Brit's just using his hydraulic you press there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so he's pressing that oil seal in there into that back housing. I got him to do that rather than me hammering it with a bit of wood as he was mentioning there. So that one's all pressed in there nicely. And it's still got the previous damage in there from when that stake nut destroyed itself uh, about a year ago when I was testing that. Uh, but anyway, no problem there. So here I'm back now at the hangar and uh, time to start reassembling things. So I've got the oil shuttle in there and now I don't have to grease the bearings now which is kind of nice. So just dropping things in. And then I also put the oil seal on that and now I've got it uh, flipped over the other way sitting on top of the prop shaft and I'm putting these um, those little bevel washers in there in the order that I had them so I had two of them facing each other and then another two facing each other and then I believe I had another three on top of those in the normal orientation I think I ended up putting a fourth one on there as well well I know I put an extra one on today um, which added 30 thou and that uh, just gave me a better tighter fit there but I was still able when I tightened up the nut there um, got it to sort of press down so the small roller bearing is pushed nicely into the housing so I got ultimately ended up getting the same tension on the whole prop shaft as what I had before um, but with a little bit more um, pressure on there on the um, on the oil shuttle in the end so it won't move around but you know you can still as you'll see here in a little bit you can still uh, move that feed to the shuttle um, left and right a little bit although the uh, that um, o-ring manages to keep it sort of nice and snug so it doesn't actually slop around so here I'm putting the stake nut on there and uh, I'm just about ready to put the uh, well actually putting the stake washer on there I should say and just putting the stake nut on there last and I didn't show it here but I did tension it up once I got it on there I had to you know just tap it around a couple of times to get it to exactly where I wanted it to be and then I bent up uh, two of the tabs of the uh, of the stake washer as I've done before and I uh, got it to fit nice and snugly in there so uh, after doing that the next thing to do was to put the back cover on there and uh, you know just make sure everything's sealed up nicely so yeah, I'm kind of actually feeling pretty confident that this is the solution now because you know as I was saying in the last video I really wanted to run this full oil bath set up from a long time ago Mark had recommended it way back when but you know we could never figure out how to do it without a full-time oil fee but now we have so you can see that's running in there nicely and I have uh, as you can see there I have bent up the tabs in there already um, I didn't show that transition there you can see that that's sort of sitting and snugged up tight there and you can still see the o-ring compressed in there so it's working nicely and uh, I also put a cap in that one drain that we kept if we ever wanted to drain the bottom and then there's the main drain there I haven't put any sealer on that yet so now it's time to put the back case on there so as I said I got the stake nut and um, on there and tightened up and the uh, and the stake washer two of the tabs bent over so I'm just putting a little bit of oil around the oil seal there and also around the o-ring um, and I, I did actually wet down that o-ring before I put it into the housing and I pulled it out and wet it down with some oil so it would create a nice good seal and just drop that guy on there and then put the um, the six allen bolts in there that hold it into place and then my next job was to see if I could pull a vacuum on there and have it hold the vacuum because uh, as I was saying in the last video that the oil sump on the Audi engine actually does have a vacuum in it and if you look at like the dipstick in there that has an o-ring for that exact reason and we need the vacuum to be working in order to you know quickly pull the 
the oil out of the redrive that's coming in there from the governor when it's when it's feeding and obviously you know sort of um, getting through that close tolerance area and, and then into the drive we don't want the drive filling up with oil we want it to just maintain that that level that we have although once it's turning it'll all the oil in there will be you know all over the place so here I got my uh, little handy vacuum pump from Harbour Freight and I'm just shoving that little nozzle that comes with it in that drain tube I've blocked up the inlet tube there and the only other place where it can get in and out is through there so um, where the prop uh, oil feed goes so all I did here was just basically put the palm of my hand over that hole and now I'm going to be testing to make sure that the oil seals can hold the vacuum because uh, that's really the only thing there where it can leak out unless I've got a you know bad fitting in there so a bunch of pumps on there with the uh, with the vacuum uh, pump and without too much problem I was able to just pull five inches of uh, a vacuum on there and it pretty much held there for quite a while I'd had to wait like I don't know probably a minute or more before it went down even like to you know 4.75 so uh, yeah so that's working and I didn't have to do anything there it just worked right right out the bat right off the bat so I'm um, pretty confident now that when the engine starts or the sump starts sucking oil that'll be able to keep that vacuum in there so there I got the uh, sump pan back in place and put the sealant around the, the flange of that and put the bolts up there and snug them up and let the sealant dry a little bit and uh, now this is at the end of the day um, I've also created that new line so there's it's going to come out the drain there it's going to run down around the back here and then under the one little part of the engine there and across to the other side and then a 90 degree um, fitting in there so uh, yeah that's pretty much done so this is the end of the day Friday now and all I have to do Saturday I'll be going in um, and all I have to do is uh, fill some oil in there using a tube and bring that up to the level until it starts coming out and then obviously put the fitting on there and tighten that up and then I'll fill up the engine with oil because I didn't do that yet I wanted to wait and let that sump uh, set up and then I can put the prop back on and uh, just double check everything and then I can fire it up again and we'll see how it works this time so you'll have to tune in on uh, Tuesday and see how it turns out anyway that's the update for this week thanks again for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next week mm -hmm.